Hi, my name is Christian Schmidt. Um, I'm here at EHJ today at uh, Cardiology Update 2017 in Davos. I'm sitting here with uh, Professor Sanjay Sharma, uh, cardiologist at Professor of Cardiology at the St. George's in London. Professor Sharma, you are one of the most ambitious sports cardiolo cardiologists today. What made you a sports cardiologist? Well, I've always been interested in sport and uh, I did my research on a condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. I was particularly interested in differentiating abnormal hypertrophy of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy from physiological left ventricular hypertrophy because the distinction between the two is quite important. Uh, the diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has important implications in an athlete because it's a reason for disqualification to minimize the risk of sudden death. Now, we had lots of access to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients, but I had to contact many sporting clubs to try to obtain athletes who had physiological left ventricular hypertrophy. So I made contact with the Lawn Tennis Association through the charity Cardiac Risk in the Young and various football clubs. And as a result of that, I became very interested in sports cardiology. And then one thing led to another. I also became the medical director of the London Marathon, which is the third largest marathon in the world. And I've never looked back since, really. All right. Critics say that SCD in athletes is not really an issue because of the relatively low incidences. What do you answer to them? Well, it's true to say that sudden cardiac death in sport is uncommon. It affects one in 50,000 uh, young athletes. But when it does occur, it occurs in a very young individual um, who loses six or seven decades of life from diseases that can be diagnosed during life and from diseases whose natural history can be modified by lifestyle advice, medical therapy such as beta blockers for long QT syndrome, ablation for Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, or even implantation of a cardioverted defibrillator. Now, whether we like it or not, sportsmen are very, very special individuals. We, we all preach exercise. These individuals push themselves beyond their limits for club and country, and they're a source of aspiration and inspiration to our youth. So when one of these young individuals dies, the media uh, are on it. They draw attention to the, visit, to, to the youth of the individual, the counterintuitive nature of the event, and clearly uh, th send shockwaves through the general public. So I think it's very important that we're on top of this. Absolutely. So it's all about screening. It's not only about uh, prevention of sudden cardiac death. Let's talk about screening. Um, there's a lot of data coming from the early 80s from Italy, where they have a mandatory screening program mand mandated by law. What do you think about these data? And how do, uh, do the, the guidelines changed within the last years? Well, the Italian screening program is pragmatic. It relies on a health questionnaire pertaining to symptoms of cardiovascular disease over a family history. And the latter is important because the vast majority of conditions that cause sudden death among athletes are inherited. And it also fo focuses on physical examination, the detection of murmurs, the Marfan habitus and high blood pressure, and then adds to that the 12 lead ECG. Now, the 12 lead ECG is absolutely crucial because it will pick up uh, electrical diseases such as long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome, and Wolf Parkinson White syndrome that are implicated in exercise related sudden cardiac death. But it's also important in detecting young individuals who may harbor a cardiomyopathy. For example, 90% or more of people with, of individuals with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy actually have an abnormal ECG. And around 60% of people with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy also have an, e an, ab have an abnormal ECG. Now, until the 80s uh, and 90s, Italy was the only country that actually mandated screening in all young competitive athletes, whereby anybody that engaged in competitive sport had to have an annual assessment uh, and had to pass that before they could continue. So there's a lot of data. And in that time, yes, uh, the Veneta region particularly collated data on, in over 42,000 individuals, during which 55 individuals died. And what they showed over a 24-year period or so is that they reduced the risk of sudden death or the prevalence of sudden death from 3.6 per 100,000 person years to 0.4 
uh, per 100,000 person years, which represents a 90% reduction in sudden death. You mentioned that the ECG is the crucial part of the screening. How do the, the recommendations for interpretation of the athlete's ECG, which is not easy actually, changed within the last years? I think one of the problems with screening, and this is where the antagonists come in, is that the false positive rate with ECG is high. And if we look at the former 2010 ESC recommendations that have been very widely cited and been extremely useful, the false positive rate ranged between 9% and 22%, which clearly uh, required a call for modification of the ECG guidelines. Now, I should point out that although the ECG criteria from Italy were laudable, uh, certainly the ESC recommendations were very laudable and very useful, they basically uh, were derived from 32,000 non-select athletes. Many of these individuals had entered athletic activity for the first time and they were derived purely from the white population. So it's difficult to be sure whether they can be extrapolated to very high level athletes and athletes that are non-white, for example, the black population that is, is huge in France, the United States and the United Kingdom. And so we needed to look at ethnic specific uh, criteria and also look specifically at athletes who train very, very hard. And this led to the development of new international recommendations, which will be published in, which will be published in the European Heart Journal on February the 20th. What is the most striking changes uh, uh, you made in, in these uh, current recommendations? Well, there are four important changes. Firstly, that we will accept T-wave inversion in leads V1 to V4 as a normal variant in black athletes, provided they are preceded by J-point elevation and convex ST segment elevation. Secondly, we'll accept T-wave inversion in V1 and V2 in all adult white athletes. Thirdly, we will accept T-wave inversion in V1 to V3 in athletes aged under 16. And fourthly, we will accept left axis deviation, right axis deviation, right atrial enlargement, left atrial enlargement, and right bundle branch block as borderline anomalies, that if more, of, more than one of these exist in one athlete, then they will go into the abnormal category. But if an athlete just has one of these anomalies, along with the typical group one ECG changes, we would not investigate those individuals. And if we actually applied those criteria now to a large white population, our false positive rate will be around 2.4%, which is much more acceptable than the current criteria. Although I must say we have plenty of work to do with black athletes because the false positive rate in that group sits at around 5.8%. These are amazing numbers really, but still a lot to do. Can you give us an outlook uh, for the next years? Or have we already reached a bottom line? Is there a role for additional techniques like echo imaging or MRI imaging? Or can we really rely on the ECG? Well, no, there is certainly scope for lots of different modalities, uh, but obviously cost could be prohibitive because an echo, although not very expensive, it's much more expensive than an echocardiogram. Sorry, it's much more expensive than an electrocardiogram. And MRI scans are even more expensive. So we need something that's pragmatic, that can be used easily, particularly by sporting organizations that are not financially endowed. So it's one thing elite sporting organizations implementing screening, but what about the grassroots sports that don't have the money? So we need to focus, continue to focus on the ECG. We need to look specifically at different ethnicities. We need to look at the impact of mixed races. There's one thing saying white person's athlete, a white person's ECG or a black person's ECG, whereas many athletes are now mixed race. And we should also focus on, on an ever increasing population of sportsmen. These are the middle-aged people an increasing number of these individuals are now engaging in mass events such as the marathon and cyclosportives and we need to know a lot more about their hearts because if we look at sudden death in sport 94 percent of all sudden death in sport occurs in the older masters group rather than the young competitive sportsmen so good times ahead looking forward for that are you a sportsman yourself what's your favorite sport Sanjay well I rely on sport that re doesn't require much skill <laughs> so I I have always always enjoyed running running's been my sport I was a pretty decent runner a cross-country runner at school um, I stopped all that after I met my wife and had our children but uh, 
when I looked at the mirror when I was 40 and I saw a little flab appearing, I thought I needed to go back. So I try and, I try and squeeze in three 10K runs a week. Right. Yeah. And um, I think uh, my personal bet's not great, though. It's, it's, it's about 49 minutes. Great. <laughs> Professor Sharma, thank you very much. Thank Enjoy you. your time here in Davos, and it was nice to meet you. Thank you very much.